Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Mutant here. Today we're going to continue our journey on Path of Evil. Now if you recall from our last episode, we just found this wonderful town, and we haven't finished exploring it yet. There's a lot of stuff here, so let's get into it, okay? Um, I am still... Let me pause the game here for a quick moment as I discuss some stuff with you guys. I am still working on my upgraded spell book, as I've told you guys in the past. This is going to take a while, uh, but I've just thought of another really good idea, which is making it even longer. And I do apologize for that. But I think once you finally see the finished product, you'll be very pleased. To give you a short, very brief explanation on what I'm adding, uh, something that I've always thought was missing from the spell. So here, let's actually pop up the spell book. Now, this hasn't been changed. This is the, the typical spell book that we have. I haven't imported the new file, the new spells uh, uh, 2 da as well as the new um, uh, dialogue TLK file. These are the two files that I'm really modifying heavily. Uh, and by modify, I, I want to be very clear. I am I'm stepping on uh, the shoulders of giants here. You know, I have you know, reruns, uh, spell fixes, and improvements. I'm working with Cadron's merge pack. Uh, you know, I have Mage Tome in here. I have a lot of really, really good stuff that came from many great modders well before me and all I'm doing is fixing some minor tweaks some things that I just thought was not broken but just not quite what we were hoping for and oh, here's a fine example so you know how this cat's great as the transmute creature becomes more graceful agile and coordinated the spell grants blah blah there so forth yada 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 you see you get this with cat's grace you see this uh, description uh, extremely similar in things like um, bull strength and bears endurance where they give you a, a, a very nice brief synopsis of what the spell does in kind of like layman's terms. Something that I always thought was missing. So when you get to things like Eagle Splendor, you get plus four charisma. Fox is Cunning, you get plus four intelligence. It's kind of underwhelming, right? So things like that I'm fixing. Descriptors I'm fixing you know, if I can find one that makes sense. Now, the descriptors may not be descriptors that would fit for true D&D. Uh, and what I mean by that is for those that are familiar with this game, you know that this is based on th uh, the 3.5 edition D&D &D rule set, as close as they can get it. The descriptors are things like evil, good, acid, fire, you know, uh, negative for negative energy, death for death spells. You get the general you know, uh, weapon enchantment, armor enchantment, things like that. Some of the descriptors that I will be adding while not necessarily uh, strictly pen and paper, are ones that I think would kind of fit, like wards or uh, an enchantment of some kind, you know, transmutation of some kind. So some some word or couple of words here in the descriptor to give a nice, the, you know, this kind of is what you're looking at for a spell. Uh, a little more detail here, and you'll see when you get to, like, Cadron's uh, specific spells that they've upgraded, they have uh, underneath what the spell does, uh, as far as the game is concerned, you'll see like a little brief description uh, that's been italicized. I love that. I think that was really cool. I just don't think they took it quite far enough. They did it for the spells that they made, and I appreciate that. And I will keep those. I'm not trying to change that stuff. The ones I'm going to change is I'm going to add it to ones like this that are missing things. And the things that I'm going to add, at least almost guaranteed that I'll add, will be if it has a... So you see have your verbal and somatic components? Well, you're also missing the material components, right? Because they decided that it wasn't necessary for this game, and it would just confuse people to see material components when you never use any. It's just implied in the game, and I put that in air quotes, um, that you have the material components, and you would just ignore that part of the spell. So I'm going to have a little description, also italicized. I'll have it before what the actual spell does for you. So I'll have mine on top, and then the, the, the description of like this, the target creature's intelligence increased by plus four will be at the bottom just like it is right now, so I won't change any of that, assuming it's accurate. Uh, mine will be italicized, and it will include uh, what spell component you're using. I thought that'd be a nice little addition. Now, it, you're not actually using it. I mean, I'm not giving you anything. It's just in the description, adding a little bit of flavor to the game, something that I always thought was missing. And when I come to that realization, I've uh, had to backtrack and redo a whole bunch of spells, because I'm doing all of them. I mean, every last spell that I can find. Uh, and I'm doing it as close to pen and paper as I can get it. Now, I, if I can't find a description, like, like it says material component, and it tells me what the material component is, I'll give you a for, a for instance. There's a, I want to say Mel's Acid Arrow is a fine example. And the material component for it is, I want to say, an, a, a, an adder's stomach and something else, some ground paprika or some crap like that. And if without knowing what they do with those things, other than they just have them, 
I have to come up with a description. So, you know, if it's like a, a fine one is Agonazar's Scorcher, which is a spell that I totally am going to get. Really nice damage. I think it's a level two spell. It's one you can't research the traditional way. I have to learn it as I level up, so I can't scribe a scroll for it. Um, so I'll have to learn it if I want it. And it uses a red dragon scale, for instance. So I, you know, talk about you know you're conjuring fire or evoking or whatever the hell the spell is in abjuration. I don't think it's either conjuration or evocation. That you basically focus and channel your uh, you know, magical energies into the red dragon scale, pointed at your target, and you know a gout of fire flies out or some kind of description like that. That's basically what I'm doing, along with fixing some other things that are just random goose typos. Uh, some that you know still say, oh, it does magic damage when it actually does sonic or vice versa. You know, making it more accurate is all I'm really doing. And same principle for the stuff that I'm quote unquote fixing. Remember, I can't adjust, at least I don't know how to, adjust damage output and stuff like that. So if a spell's broken, I'll either delete it. If I think that uh, it could be used at a higher level, uh, even though it's not pen and paper, because then for whatever reason the modder has it broken in some way where I suddenly I'm doing retarded amount of damage for like a level 2 spell, I'll make it a level 4, 5, 6 spell, whatever seems appropriate. You know, so we're not losing out on those. That's that's basically the goal of that mod that I'm putting together. And it will, as, as close as I can get guys, have uh, credit to everybody that made the mods before me. I'm not trying to steal their work. I'm certainly not trying to claim it as my own. I'm just adding to what's already been done. And that's the goal. So that's still going to take some time. I am working on it, and it is a long, trudging path. I've already gotten up to level 3 spells done. And I, well, that doesn't sound like a lot. I've done level 1, 2, and 3 in the past couple days when I got this epiphany. So 4 through you know 9 is going to take me a little bit of time. But there, we have a lot less spells, as you all know, once you get to level 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'm in fixing spells that are druid spells, cleric spells, wizard spells, wizard slash sorcerer spells. Uh, I don't know if there's any of them that I'm going to be fixing that are warlock. And I do apologize for that, because I don't know if warlocks use components, because those aren't spells, quote-unquote, like ours. They're incantations evocations or something like that. Um, so I don't know enough about Warlock. If you guys have more information on that and would like to see that, by all means, you know, put a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think of this idea. Uh, and, I, you know, I might spice it up and flavor it a little bit, you know, like, you know, yes, it's all the italicized, but like the name of the spell, for example, uh, if in, in Cadron's work, um, Cadron has some really nice um, italicized uh, for just this name of the spell in some of these things. So I thought, well, hey, maybe I could use that, but let's try it slightly different. Instead of just italicizing it, I'll have the, the whole text like I want, you know, the, the description of what you're doing uh, be italicized. And if the name of the spell happens to be in that italics, maybe I'll have that in a different colored font, like gold or red or something that sticks out so that you know that this is the spell we're talking about. You know, that's, that's the general idea. Anyway, I'm rambling, but let's get into it. Now, we are here, and we have rested. Uh, let's pre-buff up. As you know, we never know when we are going to be ganked. So it's always to our benefit to make sure we are buffed. So I'm really jazzed. I, I know that doesn't sound like it's coming across like I am, but I am truly jazzed about some of the stuff that I'm uh, doing on that mod. All right, let's get everybody to follow me. We have our AI on. Yes, sorry. No, I think we talked to Foz, by the way. Let's prove to ourselves. Oh, yeah, this is the one that we couldn't rob. This was the guy that was shady and nervous. All right, let's just see if there's anything here. Nothing that sticks out. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, here. Let's pause it. Let's check the map. All right, so you see, we were here. A uh, little typo there. Uh, merchant tents. We came in through this way. There was something over here I saw once I did the replay video. I didn't notice it before. Maybe we'll check that out at the very end. But there is a lot here. I mean, I kid you not. I mean, we got way more territory to cover in here than I actually anticipated uh, covering. Um, so let's kind of hug a wall here, right? First, we want to find doors that we can get into. You know. 
I'm going to hammer on that Z key, see if there's anything. And of course, we got stairs. Can we actually pan up and get up there? Oh, for a second, I thought he was going to run up the stairs. Not boo. No. Just pausing there. All right, well, anyway, we have a door. Let's see if we can unlock this bad boy. Come on, buddy, you got this kibosh. I don't know whose house we're breaking into, but it looks pretty pimp. All right, good work and a good start. All right. One of the other reasons. Oh. Oops, stop. This is the house of Najwa. What business do you have here? Well, this woman looks up at you from a conversation she's having with the man across from her. Amen. Yes, ma'am. You idiot. These are the foreigners I was told about. Let them in. I would speak to them. Yes, ma'am. Well, all right. That was a pure dumb luck moment. Oh, stalker. Najwa. Stalker, can anything to say? This person remains silent. A pleasure. Oh, thank you. Foreigners, I would get better acquainted with you. Let us talk. You may ignore my two guards and this man here. She gestures at the man with face paint ac across from her. They are in my employ and loyal to the dead. You knew I was coming? No, I do not know who you are. Only foreigners in this land and strangers to Alcazar Al Kabir. That doesn't explain why you told your guard you wanted to talk to me. But it does, in a way. How many places have you been that have the guards posted inside the building? Not many, I admit. That is because their employer does not wish to attract undue attention. Mm, wisdom check, Lord check. Mm. Oh, here you go, Lord check, and I'm good at lore. Women in Kalamshan are very rarely employers of note outside the underworld. Learning the ways of Kalam Shan already, are you? In Kalam Shan, society says women can only excel in one area if they wish to advance in the world. Intelligent check successful. Then you are an employer in this place. Indeed I am. My position in regular society is much more respectable. I assure you, I cannot harm me. It cannot harm me for you to know this. Being a foreigner, none in Al Khazir Al Kabir would listen to any aspersions you cast about me. Good point. Yeah, basically, I'm the foreigner. Anything I say about her, they wouldn't believe the word I say. Continue to listen. My people were not looking for you when you came to town, but they reported your presence to me anyway. Your presence could prove most useful to me. I don't work for free. Always good advice, by the way, guys. Nor would I ask you to. Coin makes Kalam Shan flow by using the merchant's trade. Coin is valuable elsewhere, of course. So what is the matter that you have to go outside your employer's? employees to have it done. Not just my employees. I would have needed to go outside any residence of al Qazir al Kabir entirely. That is why your arrival, though unexpected, is welcome. And why the hell does she need to get any resident? Oh, are we staging a coup? What do you need done that you cannot find a talent to do? The business I work in is all about connections. I have dealings in several cities in Kalamshan, and there are those elsewhere who wish to deal with me. A representative of the Knights of the Shield merchant organization has come to Alcazir Al Kabir to meet with me. Hmm. Or check successful. To call the Knights of the Shield a merchant organization is to understate what they do. Yes, it is. I see you may have killed many kobolds in your adventures, but have not neglected to learn about real power sources. The Knights of the Shield merchants are indeed a front for their underlying aims. Oh. They have aims, do they? Continue to listen. An agent of the Knights. Juma El Abbar has come to Al Khazar Al Kabir to meet with me. This, in and of itself, is no large matter. I routinely meet with agents of the Knights to arrange various things. Continue to listen. I have my own people working among the Knights, and I was told that this time Juma has been sent with a less than pleasant purpose. The Knights plan to establish a new alliance in Al Khazar Al Kabir, and I am to be silenced. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. So the Knights sent an assassin. Yes, at least that is what my people have informed me. I have no reason to disbelieve them. So just send your people to get rid of Juma. No, the Knights have their own people here in Al-Khazar Kabir as well. Juma is being watched by them, no doubt, to make sure he succeeds and to report back if he fails. If I sent my own people to kill Juma, those in the employ of the Knights would report that back to their superiors, who would then deduce the presence of my own people in their number. That would be bad for the health of my employees and bad for me. Also, she's got spies on the inside as well. Mm. Playing both sides. Look at you guys. Continue to listen. 
That is why your presence as an outsider is welcome. You could remove Jamal from me, and the operators of the Knights would have to report back that Jamal ran afoul of wandering adventurers. Intelligence check successful. Won't they report our identities back? That is not going to be healthy for us. We see a few foreigners here. They would report back that adventurers dispose of Jamal, but one foreigner is the same as another to most here. Your description would be lost. You would simply be a foreign adventurer, and I would be able to deny everything, saying the foreign adventurers were trying to implicate me. The Knights of the Shield will not believe that I employ non calumshites If I take care of Jama, it is going to cost you. I'm aware of that. Jama is staying at the Elegant Talisman, an inn I own. I want him to die slowly so he can not tell the Knights of this immediately from the afterlife. My people have prepared an opening in the floor of the basement and are aware you might take Jama there so no eyebrows will be raised. Bury him there, alive. In a week or two, he will starve. This will give me the time I'll need to arrange other matters related to this before Jama can talk. I offer 5,000 gold for the work. He may take it or not, but there is no bargaining. <sighs> well, I am evil, guys. <laughs> I'm just saying, I've never buried anyone alive before, but I guess we're going to do that this week. Deal. Bury Jama alive in the basement of the inn. Got it. <laughs> that is so cruel, man. <laughs> Uh, what the hell? Alright, let's look at the journal update on that one. <laughs> Kazar al Kabir Najwa and the Knights of the Shield. Najwa, a local leader in the Kalimshan underworld, has offered you a job to get rid of an agent of the Knights of the Shield, Juma el Anbar. She wants him buried alive in the basement beneath the inn. Najwa offered you 5,000 gold for your services. You have accepted. We're probably not going to complete that mission anytime soon, though. I get the sneaking suspicion that burying someone alive may take some time. Uh, but, but we'll keep that in our back pocket and see where that takes us. Uh, I did want to point out, that, in, uh, since I haven't really had a chance to tell anybody anything about this game, but this new area is very lovely. I mean, if you really look around, you can see that they put in a lot of effort to make the, the floors, the walls, the decorations look extremely nice. So I am extremely pleased with what they've offered. Where am I? We have anything in here we could steal. Maybe we get that 5,000 gold early. No, no, no joy. Well, all right. Okay, so uh, we have an inn to go to. So. I don't know if that's on our map. Let's actually pop the map and we'll step outside take a look at this. That's trippy, man. I can't believe we stumbled across that, like, out of nowhere. All right. Oops. Did I have it open? No, I did have it open. Derp. Uh, an end. I don't see anything about an end. So maybe it'll open up as we explore some more, shall we? Let's do this. All right. And we have another locked door. I wonder what kind of murder investigation we're going to get involved in if we open this one. Let's find out, shall we? Come on, come on. Time's a wasting, man. It's going to be us murdering like the whole town or something. It's going to be wholly messed up. I get XP every time he unlocks a door, though, so I'm not really going to shy away from trying. Alright. We got an empty place. With some stuff in the other room. We got some loaves of bread. We the You're big green, perhaps. Yeah, we might want to walk ahead with our buddy, our fighter type. Now we got an armoire over here, and I really want Kavas to check it out, because I... Damn it, who leaves stale bread for me? What the hell does that mean? I don't know what you're talking about, Kavas. You're weird. Stop being weird. Little El Swanko Casa here. Look at all the rugs they got, though. Oh, I want that oh, amulet. Like gimme, gimme, gimme. And go to the Arv Arvarine's Amulet of Aid. Ooh, that could be cool. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Uh, oh, this can't use it. Why can't I? Oh, ah, boo. Only neutral or good types can use it, not evil. None of the evil classes can, and every last one of us is evil as the day is long. Man, would that be nice, though. Six charges, eight level three, one charge per use. <sighs> Might be able to sell that, though, for a pretty penny, so we'll keep it on the main character. That was cool. A healthy little find. Wish I could use it. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. We were... We're in some more. Let's see, where are we? Well, we're down here by where we entered. Let's just make sure there wasn't a door or something. 
over here that we wanted to open. These are the yes. Oh yeah, our abandoned weapon merchants. Yeah, yeah, we are top with him. Should be kids and a lady over here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we didn't talk to everybody over this way, so let's actually wander the map. Yay way. We've already been up in here more or less. There's still someone over here. I think we needed to, a couple people in over here. We need to talk to right. Yeah, there's like a lady uh, and a guy or a couple of guys. Oh, and I think there was like a, a tr tracker of some kind. I wonder if those are adventurers we could hire. That'd be pretty sick. All right, commenter number one nice. says, "What makes the desert beautiful is that somewhere it hides a well." Oh, scorpion tonight. But then again, it's scorpion every night. Oh, yield. And anyone know what scorpion tastes like? And for those of you that have, don't tell me it's some kind of delicacy because I know you're lying. Ooh, don't you ever eat bugs? Bugs are awesome. We eat them all the time. Where I'm from, yeah, you're lying. Hey, your boy says, uh, hello. Well, uh, hello to you too. Let's, uh, we want to still check out these tents. We don't want to just assume that we're, we're missing out on anything here. Anything in that one? Don't appear to be. It's a nice area. They really did a really nice job out here. Well, I must admit, whoever the moderator is, and I should really look that up so I can tell you their name properly. Um, they did an excellent job. I mean, I I feel invested in this game. Let me put it that way. Everything we do now seems to be something of importance. So, got more people in the door over that way. And a, a nice little pond. Over here, this must be the oasis that they built around their their town around, right? So there they all have water. Okay, can't seem to go upstairs. Anything back here. Remember, we always get points for exploring hidden areas, right? So, ooh, that looks pretty. Oh, now that's nice. Your command. Back us on out of here, we bro. It's a giant. Oh, it's our friend. Okay, yeah, what we got? Come on, everybody. Fall in. Come on, Gabosh. Pokey. Alright, we got more tents here. Right, we're just backtracking a little bit, folks. I know this is boring for most of you, but uh, uh, I'm assuming the guards don't have anything to say to us. Yeah, what the hell is that? Hello, my feet. Yeah, yeah, stay out of trouble. <laughs> we do a great job with us. Ooh, there's a hermit, but he's got something important to say. I greet you. I am Umra, the storyteller. For a few gold, I will tell you a tale of Count Chen. How much do you mean by a few? I mean ten, if you wish to be specific. Yeah, sure, why not? What would you like to hear about? Oh, we got choices, folks. Oh, we got history, geography, famous Count Chen, Count Chen's government, and about the organization in Count Chen. Let's do let's let's do all of them. If they because they gives us the opportunity, we might as well learn as much as we can about the area, right? So tell me about history. Kalashan is older than either of the other empires of the sands. First settled over 7,000 years ago by the Jen, a humanoid race from the elemental plane of air. These Jen were known to be very magical, and during the course of their rule, they developed many new spells previously not available in the plane of air. Sounds like genies. The Jen prospered for, well, I guess for the area where it makes sense. The Jen prospered for over a thousand years in Kalashan, but their reign was ended by an invasion of creatures and minions from the plane of fire. Ooh. Some say this is where the bitter hatred between the genie and the free... Oh, yeah. Here we go. He started. Through others contend this was just a result of a hatred that was already there. Whatever the cause, the battle was long and bloody and took over 100 years to complete. The gen finally routed the attackers, but were greatly weakened in the attempt. They slowly declined, and the last mention of the gen is on just under 6,000 years old. For the next 4,000 years, Kalimshan was dominated by nomadic tribes of humans. Tribes from various places, Chult, the Shar, the Shining Plains, Chandoth, even Am and Cormier, took turns dominating, only to be conquered by the next nearly identical tribe. Slowly, the nomadic nature of Kalimshan began to change. The explorers and traders from Am, Waterdeep, and Cormier discovered the wonders of the area. Some tribes began to settle down and develop new means of support, like fishing, farming, or trading. These communities began to band together for mutual protection, and soon a civilization was born. It was only 1,300 years old that the Shun Empire, now called Ilkazar, came into being. The Shuns were a grand and glorious empire, and their excesses were the foundation of the Kalimshan of today. They grew wise and powerful in the ways of magic, and ships and caravans bearing the Shun. Oh, 
flag traveled across the Forgotten Realms. Shun himself, a particularly powerful mage, created a book of great power during this time called the Tome of the Unicorn. The exact location of the tome has been lost in time, but since the book is two feet by three feet and made of pure metal, it is likely to still be around. Uh -huh. Something cool I want to get. Uh, somewhere. 900 years ago, the Shun Empire abruptly vanished. A great metal upheaval was suspected at first, but learned mages of other lands dispute the claim. A force that great, they say, would have disturbed magical powers and beings throughout the realms, and that didn't happen. Sages who have studied the Shun at great length have reached no definite conclusions, but the most popular theories today center around a plague or a didiad that decimated the population. I have no idea what that means, guys. Today, the Shun impact on Kelmshan is still great. The grandeur of that empire is responsible, more than anything else, for the strong national character of Kalamshan today. The ruins of the Shun's greatest city, Manratavi Teshi Mir, can still be found in the wilderness to the west of the edge of the forest of Mir. Well, all right. Is there anything else you can to learn if more? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, let's see, so we already did history. We're doing geography. Kalamshan covers the southern corner of West Faerun including the Kalim Desert and the Spider Swamp. Successor of Koramshan, Kalimshan's capital is the sprawling port city of Kalim Port, home to Emperor Sil Pasha Rilan el Persakal, nice name, and the many powerful wealthy nobles called Pashas. Other major cities include Memnon and the coastal city of Shamader. We are the rightful rulers of all the lands south and west of the Sea of Fallen Stars. I know what else you got for me. Oh, famous Kalimshites. What do you got? Rowland L. Persakal is Sil Pasha of Kalimshan. He is a dark haired, lean, and imposing figure that seems younger than his years, with only a small patches of gray along the temples as any indication that he is anywhere close to being more than 60 years old. Rowland L. Persakal possesses a calm demeanor in most situations, though the smile he offers can be full of secret meanings to those observant enough to catch them. He has a powerful gift in oratory, often described as spellbinding, and this has brought him great favor with the common people. Rowan L. Persakal has a love for history, particularly the stories of the Shun Imperium. One of his desires is to gain possession of the ancient city of the Shunak and revive the Imperium. Currently, Shunak is part of the territories held by Tether to the north, so this is a point of contention between the two countries. Okay, then. Sounds like that might be something the Pasha's going to want us to try to do, help take over an area. What would you like to hear about? Oh, tell me about the government. Since the fall of the Shun, no force or people has risen to solely dominate the land. There are a half dozen or so major cities, each of which exerts its power over its own area. About 170 years ago, a man in Calimport amassed a large army and declared himself Pasha over the land. Before the army could march, however, the representatives of each major city met and agreed to recognize the Pasha's authority authorita, in areas and to pay a small tribute to him, enough to pay for the works of the Pasha was expected to do. The oldest son of each Pasha inherits the title. If there is no son, the mayors of each large city select a new one. The current Pasha, Rashid Jenispool, has ruled for over 18 years and is the grandson of a Pasha elected by the mayors of Kalimshan 44 years ago. Well, all right. What else would you like to hear about? All right, let's learn about the last thing. Tell me about an organization in Kalimshan. House Basadoni is the greatest guild of the many in Kalimport. Once led by Pasha Pook, House Basadoni was later controlled for a brief period by the halfling friend of Dritz, Duorden Regis. It also became the front for Jarlaxle's attempt to widen his band of rogue drows and influence to the surface world. Artemis Entry served as the figurehead of the house during the ruse. Eventually, the two adventurers set off away from the city, leaving the house in the control of a female lieutenant. Alrighty. Hmm. Hey, I lost gold for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We knew that, though. That's kind of sucky. Yeah, it was only 50 bucks. I mean... Yeah, I'm not happy about losing money, but we had plenty, so we're all good. And we learned quite a bit. We have a door. Guild Guard. Omaker's oh, Guild Guard. 
This is the Maker's Guild, stranger. Join the guild and you may craft to your heart's desire. What's involved in joining this guild? A fee of 300 pieces of gold will be sufficient. We don't have crafting stuff right now, though, do we? Oh, we got some. Uh, I don't care, join. We're going to pass on that for now. I, I don't know that I won't need that money for some you know stuff that we're about to buy, so we're going to hold off on that. Where's our map? But that's the Maker's Guild. Oh, and that's a, a point of interest now, because I don't think that was on our map before, was it? So that's kind of cool. Yeah, map note added. There you go. Here's another one. Temple of... Ooh, there's a temple. Do we go inside? Or, oh, let's, let's finish uh, outside first here. And then we'll go inside. All right, we've been there. Oh, Yusuf the armor merchant. I don't remember if we hit Yusuf. And there's a fighter, a fighter, and a fighter. Ooh, see, now this could be... Um, under counter, under counter. This could be our, our teammates. The Phoenix Hope can wing her way through the desert skies and still defying fortune, spite, revive from ashes and rise. Okay. Sunshine's all the time makes a desert. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, Rose Scorpion, what are you going to do? Alright, so we got. Uh, oh, yeah, so these are the trackers. And that one's got a name. I'm betting that's probably important, right? Commoner, commoner, commoner is probably not. Well, here's another merchant. Let's see if we can steal from this guy. Hey, uh, buddy. I greet you. Here, Kavas. All right, welcome to my shop. Would you like to see my wares? All the sundry items you could want. Kavas gives you the look he does when he's stolen something from the person you're talking to. I have something placed in your inventory. Boom. Anything catch your eye? Yeah, the crap ton of thieves tools I just got. Woot woot. I'll take that. Sure, minor circlet of blast. And, and man, this stuff is pricey, dude. We got some potions. That's come in handy, of course. We got potions. I got plenty of plus potions right now. But holy crap. Oh, this is the Thieves Guild guy. Look at him with all his traps and healers kits and stuff. We're gonna snag a couple of them healers kits, though. 99 bucks is pricey, but we'll put them to good use. Alright, what has you soft armor version got? I greet you. Don't go into the desert without something to protect your skin. Kavas gives you the look he does when he's stolen something from the person you're talking to. 125 gold has been given to you. What? Damn desert bugs. Anyway, check my stock. Yeah, let's see what you have. Alright, he has nothing there, 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 or there. He is strictly armor. And yeah, we have some enchanted stuff. Uh, I don't think anything better than what we got. I mean, there's one certainly that better, but the price-wise, I mean, there's no way we're affording this stuff. Some extra wisdom. Well, that's pricey. Scorpion scale. Yeah, poison. That makes sense. Other than... Ooh, a Tayak. What's a Tayak? Ooh, you need a charm person. That could come in handy. Alright, well, nothing that we're going to buy, though. Uh, let's talk to the counters, make sure there's nothing that he can say. Yeah, bro, Scorpion. All right, so we've been to that merchant, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, maybe we have. Let's go check out. Well met. Yep, no, we haven't. Here in the desert, many have died from lack of something to drink. Take a look. Kavas gives you the look he does when he's stolen something. Does that been placed in our inventory? See anything of interest? Ooh, we got some boots. Yeah, sure. Boots of elven kind. Oh, boots of elven. Hey, Kavas, bro. You totally earned that. Alright, potions, healers, kits, and that's about it. Whoa, but we got some nice potions. Hmm. What do you think that sticks out as being incredibly useful? I mean, the healing ones, obviously. Lore, I don't particularly need because I'm burning all my points into lore well, anyway, and I have a high int, so I'm based, that's a fairly certain that's intelligence based, so I should have the best lore I could have at my level. Uh, not that I couldn't use a uh, potion of Valor to give me a nice increase, but um, you know, like Arc Skin or Bull Strength would make more sense for me, I think. Aid as well. Yes. Uh, he got aid. He's got aid. He's got yes. Boss. He's got aid. Yeah, everybody's doing okay. We even got some Spark Skin. If I were to grab anything, then maybe maybe some Bull Strength. Oh, yeah. I'll splurge a little. Why not? All right, now we're over here now. You know, we even got a point. Uh, Car Carcarin, merchant's tent. 
that her? That's her. Let's go talk to her. She looks like she got scrolls. Karen looks at Tan, a tiefling. It's been years since one was last here, despite our desert heat. In an adventurer, no less. I take it few adventurers come here? Occasionally one or two. Normally they have taken up with the caravan stopping here. You don't strike me as one of those. And there were no caravans scheduled today. So you are here for something else. What did you mean by the tiefling remark? I am a wizard. Demons are a particular interest of mine. So the tiefling heritage is a natural curiosity for me. Well, that makes sense. Do you tell every stranger you meet you're interested in demons? That can make you popular. What do I care what people th here think? They've long since learned crossing me has consequences. Traveling with a tiefling, it does not make take a wizard to come to the conclusion you don't care what pe other, pe other people think as either. Yeah, well, that's true. You're obviously not Kalashite. Let's try that again. What do I care what people here think? They've long since learned crossing me has consequences. Traveling with a tiefling, it does not take a wizard to come to the conclusion you don't care what people think either. You're obviously not a Kalashite, and I am a native. I have a proposition for you, adventurer. Allow me to travel with you. I get access to a tiefling, and you get the talents of a wizard and the insight of a native. Dan, do you believe she'll aid us? Mm. An extra wizard is an extra wizard. and She may have spells that I don't have access to. I could have her scribe some scrolls, perhaps, and then I can get me some ch some cheap scrolls. That oh, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, let's do that. Do uh, well, you know, we have one, two, three? We only have three of us, and I think we'd have at least a party of four, maybe a party of six, right? So, hopefully, we're not screwing the pooch here. Let, I, I say we bring her. I do. To Karkaren, come with us then. Wonderful. Karkaren has joined you as a companion, and she has a level up waiting for her. All right, let's do that. So, I'm ready if you need me. This will give me the opportunity to show you what guy I was talking about. Oh, she's also evil. Oh, awesome. Recommended. You are a wizard and will stay such. Alrighty. Concentration's always important. Lower's always important. Bell crafting's always important. Do you have? Yeah, she does not have. Um, yes, you don't have uh, able learner. Oh, what else do we have? We can put it in. Yeah, basically, it'd be these things here, so we might as well just keep them all high. Boop. All right. Let's see if I can find you those spells I was telling you about. Um. Oh, where's Cadres? There we go. So you see stuff like this is what I was mentioning at the beginning of my video. Your hand takes on a green tint and your fingers burn with acrid smoke as you complete the spell. From your smoky palm flies an aura composed of viscous acid. Stuff like that's what I want to add to the other spells. The ones that don't have that little extra bit of flavor added to them. I'll put mine above it. I may even do that with Cadrance because I think that would make more sense to have that at the top. And then have the spell you know, description of what it's going to do for you below so that you, A, are forced to kind of read it, and then B, that, you know, the, the important stuff is still there. You know, I don't want to delete anything. But uh, that, that's exactly what I was giving that. Uh, let's see. So, what kind of spells can we give her? She's already got Mage Armor, Grease, Identify, Magic Missile, Protection from Alignment, all good spells. Summon Creature 1. Mm. Uh, True Strike could be useful. Shocking Grass could be useful. Shield, of course, is, is important. Uh, Obscuring Mist is one of those that's broken, as I told you probably in the past. Native Energy Ray we already have. So let's start working on cool stuff. Copper's Quick Blast. I don't remember if I have that one. Thunderhead's a lame one. True Strike is useful. But I think I have that, or I should damn well should. I always like Enlarged Person, though. It's a decent, long-lasting buff. Nice increase to strength. Some extra damage comes in handy. Let's grab that. And... After that, let's grab another. Let's grab one of K's spells, huh? We got acid, coal, electric, fire, sound. Oh. Well, you can never have enough of any of those things, but I think the one that's really not re well represented is for damage in here is either sound or electricity for level one stuff. Uh, you know, we have ice dagger. It's not maybe as good, but it's still a decent looking spell. 5d4 versus. 
Uh, it doesn't even say how much damage it is. Oh, there it is, 5d8. Yeah, so the K spells would actually be better here. 5d6, of course, if you're going sound, but there's a reason for that. Kelgar's Firebolt, I think I already have. That's a nice fire spell. Oh, Raven Feeblement's always a good one, and it's Necromancy, but I should already have that then. Um, let's just be smart about this and grab Electricity. Oh, we'll get another level up. Okay, yeah, so we're probably going to get to level her up all the way. That'll be nice. Uh, keep going. With the stuff that I want. Boop. Okay. Now, question is, is do I grab Able Learner now, knowing that it's useful? Probably not. Uh, well, extend and empower are always extremely useful. I'm not even going to try to dip into whatever all this mess is. Oh, what else can blind fighting is always find, find useful? Range touch attacks. Yes, please. I so say here's Agonars, Agonars, Agonazar's Scorcher. This is one of the ones I was looking at the other day that used the red dragon scale as one of its materialistic components. Oh. That one's busted. Snorlock Snowball. Or Snorlock. Ray's Stupidity Weakness. I think a broken Ray of Ice is okay. Rainbow Blast is good, but our beam I already have it. Protection from Arrows. This is a long lasting buff, and I kind of ignore it. That's an abjuration. Although, she is not limited like I am to the illusion. So, Mirror Image could come in handy. And where's that Ghost? Spell? Ghostly Visage. Yeah, there we go. I like that. Now, I'm not going to scribe it and pass it to myself, but uh, she's got crap off her physical stats here, guys. Look at that. Strength of 9, Dexterity 10, Con 13. Everything's down by 1. Uh, I hate Hagaman negatives. Um, and I know that sounds stupid. She's not going to be a pack mule, but I still just, it just bugs me. I could just easily go Con and give her some extra um, hit points, which probably isn't a horrible idea. Uh, but she ain't going to be hitting anything except for spells anyway, so... Mm, yeah, I don't want to waste time on Dex. Intelligence is already probably high. Let's get her that hit point increase. Where's that lore? Spellcraft. We'll just keep pumping it in the typicals. Alright, now for her. See, we have the ability to do cool stuff now, right? So where's my both strength? And bears and endurance. The stuff that I wasn't able to get and I didn't want to waste points on. Where the heck is. There it is. Yeah, yeah. And we even get another one. Very nice. This is extremely helpful. Well, oops. We gotta make sure to get them all the way up there. Boom. Nice. Very nice. Alright. Oh, now see, this is where we get our free crap. Let's start crafting. Brew Potion is always useful. Craft Wondrous Items is extremely useful, but I think I have that on my character, right? Craft Magic Arms and Armor, on the other hand, that could come super handy, too. We have access to that guild over there if we just shell out some cash. So maybe that will be the kind of guild we can work some stuff on. Change Missiles, Broken. Yeah. Fireball's always classic. Displacement is an illusion spell that I don't have access to, but she would. Flame Arrow, of course, is always fun. Ice lands we already have. Wreath of Flames is broken, so I won't use it. Notice the currently broken text that I've added to it, guys. Uh, Weapon of Energy is kind of kind of cool. Empiric Touch. Spider Skin lasts a decent amount of time, and it's a natural armor buff. Slow's uh, teammate friendly. Let's grab Slow. Uh, oh, we can even grab like Haste or Heroism. Hmm. I want some offensive for her, though, so let's grab some Flame Arrow. Alright, time to open up and do some book stuff here, folks. Uh, since we're going to probably take any anyway, let's just clear all this crud out. Uh, we'll give her all the attack and stuff we can get. Large grease case. We'll get her own mage armor up. I don't even think I want the grease. I think I want magic missile. Yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, doot doot. Mirror's image for her. 
probably don't need all that fun stuff. Let's actually do ghostly visits and mirror images. Those are really good buffs. One of each of those. With that, I'll take knee. And this video's probably gone on long enough. Sorry for the lack of action, folks, but uh, you know, we're hitting a lot of text here. And it's important, I think. Uh, but with that, my name is Brother Mute. Please like, subscribe, comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and I'll see you guys soon. I know.